a smile when the world is crumbling down. I said, here's my secret. When I want to cry, I take a look around and I see that I'm getting by. And I hold on. Change is coming. Hold on. Everything's going to be all right. Hold on. You can make it. Hold on, don't you worry about a thing. Some people like to worry, some people like to hide, some like to run away from the pain inside. Well, here's my secret, do what you want to do. Take a look around, and you'll see that you're getting through. So you hold on, change is coming. Hold on. Everything's gonna be all right. Hold on, you can make it. Hold on, don't you worry about a thing when the troubles of life weigh you down. Just lift your head up, yeah, yeah. When the love you see is hard to find, just be strong. Keep the faith. Everything's gonna be all right. Oh, no. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Wesley United Church. We are an open-hearted, open-minded, LGBTQ-affirming congregation that walks in the path of Jesus because we long for greater peace, love, and justice in the world. So whoever you are, whoever you love, whatever stage of your spiritual journey you are on, know that you are welcome here. You have a home at St. Andrew's Wesley United. Today we gather on the traditional and unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, the Musqueam, the Tsleil-Waututh, and the Squamish. And you might be gathering on a different territory, so take a moment to place that into the chat box or to speak it out loud, and also to share anything that you might be doing on this journey of reconciliation. Are you feeling a little impatient these days? Why would that be? So you may be delighted to know the season of Advent is about waiting. No? Not so excited? You're allowed in Advent to wait impatiently, and that is what we are going to be exploring today. In the process of sitting in the space of Advent, we might discover a kind of burning passion, an idea or seed that is planted just waiting to come forth. So let's take some time today in that difficult balance, that juggling of waiting and of urgency, of peacefulness and of passion. We're going to hear now from Jen and Ian as we light the first Advent candle, the candle of hope. Good morning. Welcome to our kitchen table. It's great to be able to meet with everyone, at least virtually, and uh, see some of you virtually again, uh, and to celebrate uh, a little bit of Advent with you this morning. So right here we are at our kitchen table where we light our Advent wreath. And we recently made our Advent wreath uh, with greens from our garden, and of course in a circular container uh, to remind us that God's love has no end. It goes on forever. And we have the five candles, uh, three candles that are blue, one candle that is pink, and the center candle that we light on Christmas Eve. The candle of hope, which will light today, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, and the candle of love. 
And three of the candles are blue, not just because it's Ian's favorite color, but it's because it's our tradition, our church's tradition. And one candle is pink because we remember, you know, long ago, the season of Advent was a very serious time. Not that it isn't that we don't take Advent seriously now as a, a time to get closer to God, but it was a very serious time, much like Lent. And they chose a Sunday in the season of Advent to have a break from the seriousness, to focus on the joy. And that's why this candle is different. But today, this morning, we light a candle. We light the candle for hope. As the flame of hope begins to burn, let the promise of the ages shine in our hearts as the great star shone so long ago in Bethlehem. Will you pray with me? God of hope, let your spirit burn in our hearts. Let your light shine in our world. And as we wait through the Advent season for the birth of Christ and the rebirth of love, let your star of hope lead us to the place where the Christ would be born today. Amen. Amen.
Yes, holy is God's name, whose people will declare me blessed, and blessings they shall claim from age to age to all who fear such mercy and love imparts dispensing justice far and near dismissing selfish hearts love casts the mighty from their thrones promotes the insecure leaves hungry spirits satisfied the rich seem suddenly poor praise god whose loving covenant support those in distress remembering past promises with present Hi, everybody, and welcome to our gathering time for today. Today, we're starting the season of Advent, which is the time of getting ready to enter the mystery of Christmas. In order to help us get ready for this mystery, we're going to learn and wonder together about something that is an important part of this season. We're going to wonder about darkness. We will wonder about darkness as a gift from God, and especially how it can help us to understand more about the theme for each week of Advent. This week, we will think about what darkness teaches us about hope. Have you ever laid awake at night and wondered or imagined what tomorrow will be like? Do you ever find it hard to fall asleep if something exciting or important is going to happen the next day? Maybe you stay awake because something hard happened to you and you want tomorrow to be different or better. When this is happening to you, one of the feelings you might feel might be hope. Or maybe hope feels far away or hard to find in those moments. I wonder if the darkness in your room at night has space for your hope and space for when you find it hard to hope. Space for all of those thoughts that keep you awake. I wonder if the darkness is holding your hope or your thoughts for you while you sleep. I wonder how this is like God. Hmm. I'm going to share a song with you that I sing sometimes at night when I have thoughts swirling in my head that I want God to hold in the darkness while I sleep so that I can get the rest that I need. This song is called Hold My Hope. Hold my hope Hold my trembling Hold my heart Teach me to be loved Hold my hope Hold my trembling Hold my heart, teach me to be loved. Hold my hope, 
Hold my trembling, hold my heart, teach me to be loved. Amen. So here we are in the first Sunday of Advent, the season of waiting. Uh, and in her waiting, Mary sang a song. You could say it's in the top ten of all time and is known to us as the Magnificat. To hear this song, we turn to the first chapter in Luke's Gospel. Now, already the angel Gabriel has come and visited Mary in the night and offered the disquieting message of her pregnancy. It, it was a message that changed not only Mary's life, but it has turned the world upside down and inside out. So a few months after that visit, Mary decides to go visit her cousin, Elizabeth, who's also pregnant. And before she steps through the door to have a cup of tea, she bursts into this song of the ages. Listen. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with great things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Waiting. I'm not very good at it. Even with trivial things, waiting for a light to turn green, waiting for the elevator, waiting in line just about anywhere, in the grocery store, in a movie theater, at the airport, waiting for traffic. And I'd like to say that I'm better at waiting when things are a little more significant, but really, I'm not. I get impatient uh, waiting for the illness to pass mine own or uh, another's, uh, waiting as we all are for an effective COVID vaccine, waiting for a time to come when we can offer handshakes and hugs and have knee-to-knee -knee conversations, waiting for friends around the table indoors, waiting to be able to see my family in California, waiting to be able to go to the grocery store without a mask on, we're all waiting, and this is collectively the most strange advent. <clears throat> Granted, not all waiting is created equal. Some waiting adds spice. Waiting for the turkey to cook as wonderful aromas fill your home. Waiting for a favorite uncle to uh, arrive. Waiting for presents to be opened. Waiting for your high school prom, for your friend to return from a year abroad for the baby to be born. Advent gives us practice waiting. One day, one week, one window on your Advent calendar, one candle on your Advent reef, the slow march through the dark, damp December days toward the solstice, the rebirth of light, the birth of Christ. Advent is that season that carries so much beauty, music, friendship, opportunities to connect with people that we love, opportunities to express generosity and our gratitude for others, our care for those who are struggling. Advent is filled with wonderful, fond memories and also beautiful surprises. But more, Advent is also that time in the Christmas season, a time of pain and disappointment, of dreams unfulfilled, the ache of loss, 
the sag of unmet expectations, hopes, and all of this is punctuated in this season of merriment and festive lights and happy holidays as we face massive problems of the pandemic, climate change, and an opioid crisis. This is a season that truly holds the hopes and fears of all the years. Our theme this Advent, these four weeks before Christmas, is waiting. We'll explore different dimensions of waiting, and today we'll follow Mary's lead and look at a particular kind of waiting, an impatient, insistent waiting. Not the impatience with a long red light, but the impatience with injustice. Mary's song rose from an impatience with a world that was out of whack, off balance, uh, disjointed. It's the holy impatience of a prophet an impatience with convenient cynicism, comfortable complacency, willful ignorance that harms others. This holy impatience of Mary's most famous song addresses politicians and religious leaders who care more about re-election or their own power than the welfare of their people. I think we have some recent examples of this. The impatience of this holy mother is aimed directly at callous structures that oppress many for the sheer benefit of the privileged few. She doesn't hold back. This song is not soft and gentle, meek and mild. Mary sings of the day when justice will roll down the mountain like an ever-flowing stream. She sings of the shalom she carries in her heart and that grows in her womb. It's a song passed down through the ages sung by Miriam and Esther, Isaiah and Jeremiah, by Malala and Greta Thunberg, and in 1960, Ruby Bridges, the first African-American child to attend an all-white elementary school in the South. As she walked past parents, and children who sneered and jeered her, protested and threatened her. This child walked strong with that song of justice ringing in her bones. That's the song Mary sang. And its magnificence continues to echo through the ages. She didn't keep it to herself. Clearly, she passed it on to at least two of her boys, Jesus and James, when we hear what Jesus taught and James wrote in that letter, we can hear the song of Mary humming through. Jesus taught that when we attend to the needs of those in prison, those hungry and naked and cold, those who are ill, we attend to him because he's with them in their suffering. To love them is to love him, and to love him is to love God. That's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. And his brother James followed the same line. He famously wrote in the letter with his name on it, Faith without works is dead. In other words, praying for the person on the street is good, but prayers alone are not enough. Offer a sandwich a word of encouragement, a meal from a kitchen, work for safe shelter, give money to places like First United that support shelter programs and employment counseling and shower facilities and spiritual support. If faith without works is dead, the corollary must be that faith accompanied by works is alive and kicking. And so this Advent, Mary's song continues to hum through us and awaken an impatient waiting because as young as she was, Mary's song comes from one who has suffered and watched others around her suffer the elegant, cruel tyranny of loveless power. Her song rises from the eyes of a pregnant mother who scans the landscape of a disjointed world and wants something better for her child. Come on, people, we can do better than this. Her song rises like the natural response of a teacher breaking up an elementary school fight or a parent stopping a bully a volunteer firefighter helping put out the blaze. Her song, the Magnificat, we hear this time of year is like an alarm that announces something's wrong. 
And it's not okay just to sit on the couch and do nothing. If you hear a holy impatience from those who speak for the Me Too movement, those who march for Black Lives Matter, those who press for action to mitigate climate change, those who doggedly work to end human trafficking, those who speak out against racism, and those who tell their story over and over again to address a poisoned drug supply or end one more person's homophobia, well, that's Mary's song. It's magnificent. It's impatient, but it's faithful. And it sang through her boys, and it sings through us. Thanks be to God. Amen. There's an old friend that I once heard say something that touched my heart and it began this way I was born by the river in a little tent Just like the river I've been running ever since He said it's been a long, a long time coming But I know my change has got to come
Please gather your body, rest your mind, and let us open ourselves to prayer. Dear one, just when we thought you were far away, just when we thought dawn would not break, the toil would not end, the change would not come, you lit a bright spark within us. Like Mary, we are suddenly pregnant with possibility and hope. We know nothing is impossible with you. We find comfort around the flame of your love. And our voices cry out like Mary's, refusing to be shuttered away, contained, shouting, Look at all the great things done for us to live in a city of peace, to breathe the sea air and be blessed by the bright green of the forest, to know that there are people who we love and who love us as well, even if we cannot embrace each other. Our feet dance out our gratitude for this breath, this life, this great turning of all creation that we are a part of. But now we ask you, O bringer of peace and bearer of all good things, to lift up the lowly, the humble, the hurting in our community, the homeless and street-involved people in Vancouver and Surrey who seek shelter and freedom from their pain. We lift up our elders in care homes who suffer without company in COVID. We lift up all those working to provide safety and essentials in this time and who are feeling so weary now. And let us not forget our commitment to our neighbors, our friends in Guatemala who continue to advocate for education for all young people, our friends in Chile who work to rebuild their democracy, and our kin in Belarus Ethiopia and Hong Kong, who endanger their very lives in their cry for freedom. Keep your promise to them of listening to the call of the less powerful, sending the powerful away with empty hands and filling the less than with good things. Holy Spirit, like Mary, we remain pregnant with the possibility of hope and with the seed of hope that springs forth in this time of darkness. We rejoice in you. Amen. And now please join me with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this time of Advent where we impatiently wait for change, let us use our time, our talents, and our resources to equip people in our city and around the world to make that change possible. So we encourage you this Sunday to look at organizations in your neighborhood who might be making a real significant difference. So many charities are going to be suffering during this time, and yet their workload will not have decreased at all. So perhaps you could reach out to them this week. And of course, we at the church continue to do our work in that same conditions. And so we are incredibly grateful for all of you who donate on a monthly basis. And if you've never thought about doing that, please contact our office so we can tell you how this can help us equip ourselves to be a light in the heart of the city and continue the good work of outreach, mental health support, pastoral care, and great programming all through the winter. Now, this week's Stall Light, we're going to hear from our wonderful Music Search Committee, which is a group of individuals who've been devoting lots of time to thinking through who and how we might call a new music director to St. Andrews Wesley. Let's listen now. 
And here we are, your music search committee. We wanted you to see us in person as much as we can be right now. I know we are all imagining ourselves back in our beloved and refurbished sanctuary with our magnificently restored and expanded organ. We are all looking forward to that day. In the meantime, your committee has been busy and we wanted to let you know just a bit about what we have been up to. We are being thorough, taking the time it needs to prepare well. Your guidance, advice, and wishes are of primary importance to us in this search. That is why we researched, developed, and offered the congregational survey with the results assisting and guiding us in creating the job description. And of course, we met with Daryl, seeking his wisdom and advice. And we've met with other musical directors here and beyond. We've researched professional music organizations. We, we spoke with churches of a similar size right across the country about their music director positions. And we developed a comprehensive music position. We have created three different versions of an advertisement to be placed in a variety of locations. We have researched ad placement possibilities locally, nationally, and internationally. We have sung and prayed and laughed together. We hold you in our hearts as we continue our work together. My spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you were great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would fall. will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. Thank you, Siobhan and Johnny. I, I love that hymn. And so as we go out into our day, into our week, into this season, may we be mindful that the world is about to turn. And may we be part of that turning by allowing our faith to be absorbed in random acts of kindness and senseless beauty and works of love. As Mary's song hums through our bones, we pray for an impatient waiting that presses toward justice for all because every life matters and every person in the eyes of God is beloved. And so may the song of Mary, the, the love of God, the light of Christ, and the uh, insistent hope of the Holy Spirit go with you and shape these holy days. Amen. <laughs>